Peace and blessings, everyone. The Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, a Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father in the heaven of heavens, the Most High's throne, bless us all. We'll begin with the Lord's Prayer before we go into this uh, Bible study. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our sins, as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All praises to the Most High, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to read from the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. And verse... 1 Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 Book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 and verse 1 So the scripture reads My son Hast thou sinned? So the question is, have we sinned? Have we sinned? Are we guilty of sinning against God the Father? Have we sinned against our brother, our people? Have we sinned against the Father? Have we sinned against our brother? Have we sinned against our brother that's made in the image and likeness of the Father in Christ? Like it teaches us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Have we sinned in, in breaking the first commandment of all? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. That's the first commandment of all, that we're to hear with attention and obedience that the Lord our God is one, and we're to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So have we sinned against the Father? Have we sinned against our brother that's made in the image and likeness of the Father in Christ? Have we broken the second commandment of all? which is to love thy neighbors thyself and to love our neighbors ourself. We're not to bear grudges against our brother. We're not to hate our brother. We're not to take vengeance upon our brother, even though they may have sinned against us, although they may have trespassed against us, although they may have offended us. We're not to grudge. We're not to retaliate. We're not to hate. But we are to, in any wise, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, meaning out of love, correct your brother for his sin and trespass against you. So, my son, has thou sinned? Have we sinned against God the Father? Have we sinned against our brother, made in the image and likeness of the Father in Christ? Do so no more. So the scripture is teaching us that if if we have sinned against our brother, the Most High, our people, do so no more. Don't do it again. Like Christ taught in John chapter uh, 8. Neither do I condemn thee. Go in what? Sin no more. Sin no more. That's what the scriptures teach us. My son, as thou sin, do so no more. If we've sinned against the Father, the Most High, if we sinned against our brother, our people, if so, do so no more. Don't do it again. Repent. How do we repent? By acknowledging our sins, confessing our sins, and forsaking our sins that we just committed. But ask... Pardon for thy former sins. 
So we're to make sure that we ask for forgiveness for what we have already done. Our past sins, pray and ask for pardon, for forgiveness. So what is this, what is this all going into? But ask pardon for that former sins. Pray to be forgiven. Then the scripture teaches us, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. So if we come across a serpent face to face, what is our natural instincts going to tell us? To flee from that serpent. Well, the Most High is teaching us that we're to flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. So opposed to playing with fire, tempting the power of the Most High, and playing with sin, which sin is not to be played with, just like if we're in, you know, in the face of a serpent. No, we're to flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. So, depending on the circumstances, fleeing from sin can be in the midst of temptation, holding our ground, and applying the commandments. Fleeing and avoiding the situation also is going into this. So sometimes we just got to all together what? Flee from that sinful situation. So whether we fleeing and avoiding the situation or we're holding our ground and applying the commandments, removing ourselves from a situation or some type of circumstance that can lead us into sin just by being there we depart you know for example in the gospels you know there were times when the people you know came against christ and they wanted to you know throw him off the cliff and the lord didn't you know fight back he didn't you know, do anything where it was going to go into some type of confrontation. It tells us that he went through the midst of the crowd and departed. See, then there's other times when the Lord would hold his ground, stand his ground. So all throughout the scriptures, whether we read about Christ or other, you know, famous men and, you know, women in the scriptures. No matter the circumstances, you know, fleeing from sinners from the face of a serpent is going into applying the scriptures, applying the commandments. You know, it's not always, you know, we're running from a situation. We're ducking from a situation where, you know, sometimes we have to face the temptation head on in a sense where we have to communicate and apply the commandments in the midst of that temptation and hold our ground. So that's why it's all about discernment, you know, the, the, the circumstances we're in. You know, we can see a group of, of people, it looks like they're up to no good, it sounds like they're up to no good. You see that, you know, that trouble's coming your way, then you wait, just walk the other way. You, you, you know, you cross the street or you avoid it altogether. And there's times where sin is present and, you know, like Joseph in Egypt, when he was seduced into committing adultery. You know, with another man's wife, his master's wife in Egypt. And he had to hold his ground. Like when him fleeing from sin is from the face of a serpent. Initially, it was actually him. Because she said, look, come by and be near me, sit next to me and all that. And he would not give in to her advances. So what did he say? He told her, you know, when she said, lie next to me, sit by me. You know, and then eventually, you know, she wanted him to, to, to lay with her. What did he say? How can I commit this um, sin and this great wickedness against God? How can I commit this great wickedness and sin against God? 
See, so you don't read where he was actually fleed from her presence, you know, initially. So that's just, you know, adding to the point. But when you keep reading, though, in, in Genesis 39, which, which I'm referring to, eventually she did after, you know, he kept fleeing from sin. He wouldn't be in her presence. Then she tried to grab the man by his garment, right, to forcibly, you know, have him you know, commit adultery with her, lay with her, right? And what did he do? It's, it's told us in Genesis 39, he fleed from her presence. He took off. <clears throat> so those are just different examples. But in all those circumstances, fleeing from sin is from the face of a serpent. You know, in any circumstances, you know, it, it's we're applying the scriptures, so we have to understand that fleeing from sinners from the face of a serpent is, is, is going into, we have to submit ourselves to, the, to do the will of God and resist the devil and the devil will flee. So we are not to give into temptation to sin. So this involves what? Humility on our part. Denying ourselves, especially of in certain circumstances, you know, the, the, that pride of life that it teaches us in First John chapter 2. That self-pride. As well as not giving into, you know, anger, wrath, bitter grudging. See, you know, going back to Leviticus chapter, the points brought out in Leviticus 19, 17, and 18 about loving your brothers yourself. You know, lust, et cetera, et cetera. So flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. Always remember, we're not to allow ourselves to be seduced and enticed. But that's what the next part is going to say. So it says, for if thou, right, for if thou, if we allow ourselves, if thou... Bear with me one sec. It says, if thou comest too near it, if thou comest too near it, meaning sin, because where the flee from sin is from the face of a serpent, it, meaning sin, just like that serpent, will bite thee. So that's a heavy point the Lord is teaching us in here, in this verse here. Don't give into the temptation of sin. We're not to allow ourselves to be seduced. That's what I meant by, for if thou comest too near it, meaning we are not to allow ourselves to be seduced, to be enticed, especially when we feel, you know, especially when we feel we're being drawn away to sin, of our own lust, of our own desire, you know, or weakness to feed into the temptation of sin. Because if we feed into it, it, meaning sin, will bite thee. It will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. So we just read, if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Once we, once sin is conceived in our mind, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. <laughs> that's the book of James chapter 1 That's what this scripture is teaching us It will bite thee The teeth thereof is the teeth of a lion we, we won't be able to escape For if thou comest too near it It will bite thee The teeth thereof are the teeth of a lion Slaying The souls of men We're not going to get away That's what the Most High is showing us in this verse We're not going to get away with sinning We're not going to get away that's why I say all iniquity, meaning when we give in to sin, 
Because remember, the, the scripture in James says, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword. The wounds whereof cannot be healed. So a, a two-edged sword, the, the damage that it inflicts, it's deep. It cuts deep. And the wounds of the Most High is trying to warn us, look, these wounds, they're, they're not, it, it, you know, they're not curable. They're incurable. That's why the Most High is warning us that when it comes to sin, don't even tempt the power of the Most High. Don't even try the power of the Most High. Because if thou comest too near it, because we got to understand what, that part there where it say, For if thou comest too near it, see, that means that we're allowing ourselves to be seduced. We're allowing ourselves to be enticed. If thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. When sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. So we gave the example of, you know, we spoke about at least the example of Joseph in Egypt. I just wanted to read the scripture um, also in the Apocrypha. Let's go to uh, 1 Maccabees, right? 1 Maccabees chapter 2, right? And I wanted to read this verse here. This is a really good scripture here. We didn't read it in Genesis 39. You can read it on your own for homework, so to speak. But this is going into what we just spoke about. So this is uh, the first, let me show you where we're quoting it from, word for word as it is written. The book of 1 Maccabees chapter 2. And I believe here in 1 Maccabees 2, Mattathias, the father of Judas Maccabees and his brethren, was exhorting Israel to, you know, to not turn to the right or to the left of our religion. You know, I, I used the word that he spoke, which is our righteousness, which is the commandments of the Father through faith in, in the Father in Christ, right? So this is, uh, I'll read First John chapter, I mean First John, First Maccabees chapter 2, right? And... Uh, let me read the 51st verse first. Let me read from the 50th verse. Actually, I'll read from 49 since I mentioned about Mattathias. So it says, Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength. So, you know, like it tell us at First Maccabees 1, you know, when the Greeks came into power, evils multiplied on the earth. And then they started to bring this wickedness and evil among Israel, in the land of Israel. And a lot of our people were conforming. They were being adulterers and adulteresses against the Most High. And they were having friendship with the world. They started to conform. So... Pride, rebuke, it, it just kept increasing unto more ungodliness. And the time of destruction, see, and the wrath of indignation. Now, therefore, my sons, be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. See, that was an exhortation of to his sons and all Israel. That was about the Most High's righteousness. Check out what he says. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did. See, so you got the book of Acts, right? Which the, the apostles and the church did by the power and authority of, 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 of our Lord sitting on the right hand of the Father, right? But you also had at the acts of, of our forefathers going into the history before them. That what they did in their time. See, so there's Really, there's the whole book, the whole Bible is books of Acts, right? So it says, so shall you receive great honor. See, honor of who? Of the Most High in Christ. 
and an everlasting what name? Meaning a name that endureth forever. A reputation. Works that endure forever. So let's skip up to verse 53. Joseph, in the time of his what? Distress. See, so that was a very, I mean, Joseph went through many distressful situations. The one in particular that stands out that we mentioned was in Genesis, the 39th chapter. When Joseph, it's going to tell us, Joseph in the time of his distress kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. So Joseph, when he was in the land of Egypt, was eventually made the Lord of Egypt. He was second to Pharaoh in power in Egypt. But he first had to what? Suffer for God's sake. For the keeping of God's commandments sake. For. Of an everlasting. Name. See Joseph. Has an everlasting name. Obviously. The everlasting name is not going into the pronunciation of his name. What gave Joseph an everlasting. Name was his what? His works. And through his works. Joseph's reputation is known as one who is what? Faithful to God. Faithful to God. Because Joseph, in the time of his distress, see, so when he was in Egypt, in Potiphar's house, his master's house, Potiphar's wife was making advances towards Joseph in an adulterous way. She was trying to seduce the man to be near her, to sit by her, and eventually lie with her. And he said, how can I sin and do this great wickedness against God? See, but when he was in the midst of that temptation, it was very, very, it was, it was a distressing situation. But he still what? Kept and guarded with his life the commandment. What commandment? J you know, Jacob taught Joseph the Most High's righteousness. Remember the Ten Commandments where we read about thou shalt not commit adultery. That's not the first time that man was given commandments. When the Most High in Christ created Adam and the rest of mankind in the image and likeness of God in Christ's righteousness, Adam had laws. He had commandments. So did the generations after him. Abraham feared God. Isaac feared God. Jacob feared God. And they taught their children. Jacob taught his children to fear God. So Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment. What commandment? Well, let me just get it real quick since we mentioned it. I'll get it in Genesis 39. What commandment did he keep? Let's go to Genesis 39. Genesis chapter 39. So this is going back to what we read here in, in 1 Maccabees. Chapter 2 and verse 53. Joseph in the time of his distress kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. So what commandment did our brother Joseph keep in guard with his life in the time of his distress, in the time of his temptation, in the time of him being tried in God's commandments. What commandment did Joseph, the son of Jacob, in the land of Egypt keep? And by keeping the Most High watched over him because even though by keeping that commandment, he suffered. He suffered for righteousness sake because the scriptures teach us that all that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. So Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment, 
was put in prison. Not because he kept the commandment, but because he suffered for righteousness sake. Well, when I say because, not because he didn't, let me make sure I'm saying this right. Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment. He ended up being in jail. Why? Because he kept the commandment and he suffered for righteousness sake. But he suffered. But in his sufferings, the Most High was with him. And he was made Lord of Egypt. So when we go to Genesis 39, right? Let me just get back to this point. Joseph, in the time of his distress. This is what we're focusing on now. Temptation. So we can understand distress. Difficult circumstances. Very difficult. An adulterous woman making advances towards his brother. That was distressful. Caused great distress. This man, Joseph, kept the commandment. What commandment? That's what we're going to get to now. Genesis 39 and 9. And it came to pass after these things that his, meaning Joseph's, master's, Wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. So his master Potiphar, that was his name. This is why Joseph was in Egypt. His, his, his wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, what? Lie with me. What does lie with me mean? We all know what that means. So now. How did that start? She started to lust with her eyes upon Joseph. See, that's that's how adultery begins. Christ said, Whosoever cometh, Christ said, Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his what heart. That's why the most high gave us commandments that we're to keep focused on. And and within those many commandments, he commanded us to wear our fringes in blue border. So that we wet, when we wear them, it's a visual reminder of something that's supposed to be in our heart. The Most High told us that when we have the friend's blue border, that we may look upon it. See, the, wearing the friend's blue border is about us, not about others looking upon us like the Pharisees made it. Oh, look at me. Look at my friend's blue border. Enlarge them. See, they were, they didn't have the right spirit behind the context of that commandment. So when we wear our friend's blue border, what does that represent? That we fear God and keep his commandments, that we observe and do the commandments of the Most High. It's actually a commandment that he gave us that when we wear these fringes, we look upon them. Because if we don't keep our eyes on God's commandments with those very same eyes, those eyes could be used to go a whoring, a whoring from God. To serve another God. This woman was, was, she cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. What did Joseph do? But he refused. Joseph refused to what? Lie with her. Because Joseph had God's commandments written in his heart. That's why I said, but he refused. And said unto her, unto his master's wife. And this goes back to the point about fleeing from sin as from the face of a serpent. That doesn't necessarily always mean that in the midst of temptation and trials that we're actually running from the situation. Perhaps in certain circumstances, that is the right course of action. But this is not... He he's not in a situation, at least not right now, where, you know, she's saying lie with me and he just runs out the house. Nah, this brother can discern. No, I have to communicate to her. I got to let her know what I'm about. And hopefully, you know, this woman stops. So it says, but he refused and said, I mean, that's what that's what we hope in these circumstances. I'm not saying that's exactly what he was thinking. 
But, that, you know, in those circles, that's what we hope, you know. And, and, and what I'm saying, it's not just talking about adultery. It could be talking about the temptation to, you know, slander someone, you know, bear false witness, you know, to, to do something out of uh, grudging. You do something begrudgingly out of anger. So it says, Behold, my master, what if not what is with me in the house? And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. So basically, Potiphar, <laughs> he entrusted Joseph with so much power that it's like he ain't got to worry about Joseph. He didn't have to keep tabs on him. It's like he gave Joseph autonomy and authority over his whole house. He hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. I'm the greatest man in this house, in my master's house. Neither hath he kept back anything from me, meaning everything in this house. I have the authority to do what's right. See? But thee, meaning hands off when it comes to you. <laughs> See, so that's, what is he doing? He's fleeing from sin is from the face of a servant by actually communicating as our Lord, the Christ of Nazareth commuted to, communicated to Satan himself when Satan tempted our Lord, for example, and said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You don't read where Christ ran from Satan and, and from thence he fleed from Satan. No, he, took the devil literally by the horns and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of, out of the mouth of God doth man live. See? So Satan knew the Lord was hungry. See, he fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, tempted for 40 days, 40 nights. Afterward, he was a hunger. What does Satan come with? If, 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 They'll be the son of God. You know, ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Satan knew that. That's why he came that way. He knew that God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. See, but there's Satan always trying to what? Trigger us. Satan trying to trigger Christ to get out the spirit. See, that's that pride of life. Try to get him to, to, to do, to perform this miracle, to prove, see, to show that he is the son of God. The Lord didn't even feed into it. He didn't allow himself to be seduced and enticed at Satan's suggestion to command that those stones be made bread. The Lord had the power to command those stones on the ground to be made in a warm, buttery bread if he wanted to. But he didn't even go there. And that's what Ecclesiastes is going into when it says, flee from sinners from the face of a serpent, for if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The whole point of what we read reading, brothers and sisters, is that don't even go there. Don't even let it get to that point. Shut Satan down from the get-go. That's what we should be getting from these scriptures, from this lesson. That's, that's what we should be getting from the Holy Spirit. Shut Satan. Satan down from the get-go. Like it's telling us in Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. In the example of Joseph in the time of his distress that we read about in 1 Maccabees 250, what was it, 252? No, 253, right? So it says, How then can I do this great wickedness? It would be wickedness for Joseph to lay down with another man's wife, Potiphar, his master's wife. And what sin against God? It would be a sin against God for Joseph to lay down with Potiphar's wife. What would be the sin? Exodus chapter twenty fourteen: Thou shalt not Commit what? Adultery. That's a commandment that God gave. But it's showing us that the first time that God's people, Israel, received that law, it was not then in Exodus 20. 
Israel had that law before. Because how did he know that to lay down with another man's wife is wickedness and sin against God unless he knew what? That it was against the commandments of God. So when we read in 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and 53, it says, Joseph in the time of his distress, see, it was distressful for Joseph to go through this. He kept the commandment. That's what we read in Israel. How can I do this great wickedness? See? You listen to, you know, in music, a lot of music, rap, R&B, a lot of this music promotes this sin. Like it's not great wickedness and sin against God, but it is. So what is Joseph doing here? He's holding his ground. He's actually fleeing from sin as from the face of a servant by what? Not allowing himself to be what? Enticed and seduced. He's holding his ground. He's communicating as our Lord did with power, the commandments of God. Like the Lord rebuked Satan and said, it is written in the law of Deuteronomy chapter 8. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. Christ knew that his life source was the most high and his word. And that man doesn't live by bread alone. The Lord was not going to command the stones to be made bread. Because his life source is the most high and his word. And that's what sustains him. So saying had to come another way. Just like this woman, she's going to try to come another way. Let's read on about that. So it says, and it came to pass. So then it said, and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her. So what is he doing? Fleeing from sinners from the face of a serpent. He couldn't leave in, out of the circumstances physically. He couldn't physically remove himself from this circumstance. But what he could do is Physically not be around her, to lie by her or be with her, see? So it said, and it came to pass as he spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. So why, like, is these points being emphasized the way that they are? Because apply this not just to the sin of being seduced and committing adultery, but it could be, you know, seduced into committing the, the sin of, of smoking weed and getting high and taking drugs, you know, a drunkenness, um given into anger, given into pride, to given into vengeance. We have to make sure that we are applying the that's we're fleeing from sin is from the safe face of a servant by applying the scriptures and not feeding into the seduction. We're not feeding into the enticement. Scriptures tell us every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own Lust, see? So Joseph would now allow himself to give in to some type of lust to what? lie by her or even be with her in her presence. So he was still fleeing from sin from the face of a servant, but he didn't run. See, a lot of times we go through temptation and trial, we just don't want to deal with him. We just run the other way, see? And that's not always the, the right and proper course of action. Sometimes it is, you know, depending on the circumstance. You know, the scriptures say, forsake the foolish and live. There are certain circumstances where you know, oh, I got to bounce. I mean, there's scriptures and there's wisdom behind that. There's discernment behind it. There's scriptures talking about when you're in the midst of foolish people, observe the time and you bounce. <laughs> See, they'll be like, look at your watch. You go, oh, I, I got to go. Oh, my. Oh, I got to call. I got to go. You know, and you just get out of that situation. But sometimes... You have to stand there and hold your ground and you have to communicate. Especially in a circumstance like this, because if he play around with it and just flees from her presence, you know, that's that's not communicating. We got to communicate the scriptures. When Satan dealt with Christ, how did Christ deal with Satan? Did he run from Satan? Did he flee from Satan? No, for 40 days, 40 nights, he was tempted of the devil. He didn't eat or drink. 
That's how he was able to be on the level to tell Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God doth man live. For 40 days, he, he didn't eat or drink, and he was tempted throughout. They tell us in the scriptures. It's not like 40 days he didn't eat and drink, and then Satan came. No, Satan came at him for 40 days, and 40 days and nights, and then afterwards the Lord was hungry, and then Satan tried to jump on that with the quickness and said, look, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And then the Lord came back the way he did. Because he what? That's, that's communicating the scriptures. See, So in this case, Joseph had to tell this woman that it's, it's, it's great wickedness and sin against God for me to, to, to do that with you, to commit adultery, to lay with you. So we apply that to any and all commandments of God. We communicate the scriptures. So now it says, And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. So Satan and his nature is going to try to what? See if Joseph is going to give place to Satan. Because Satan's already in that woman. Making these advances towards the brother to lay with him, to lay with her. Satan tried to wear us out. So that eventually we what? We give in and give up. And it says, and she called him by his garment, saying, lie with me. So she didn't stop. Even though he communicated. He made it very clear. He put his feet, you know, he held his ground, communicated. Sometimes Satan depart. Sometimes Satan don't. And because Satan didn't depart, don't get discouraged. Continue as Joseph. And he left his garment in her hand and fled. So what did he do? He applied flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, but in a different way where he still, you know, you know, wouldn't lay with her. But he saw, okay. I got to get out of here now because this woman, she's grabbing me by my garments. So she, what? He fled and got him out. Flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. Right? Verse 13. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand. See, so Joseph, Joseph took out, like, he just <laughs> kind of like, Wiggled his way out of that, you know, his outer garment that he was in. And he, my man fled. Our brother cut out. And that was the wise thing to do. Because that lady was trying to grab him and he didn't allow himself to fall upon her. Oh, you know, accidentally uh, let her, <laughs> you know, you know, he let him stumble uh, stumble on her. Now, he, 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 that brother, he resisted. He didn't play with sin. Scripts say, can a man walk upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Well, so is he that goeth unto his neighbor's wife. He that toucheth her shall not be what? They tell us in Proverbs 6, he shall not be innocent. There's no excuse. So what is this? What did this woman, what did this wicked woman do? It says, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he, <laughs> meaning her husband, hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me, he came unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. So she trying to make it look, look like Joseph was trying to forcibly, you know, sleep with her when she was the one that forcibly grab the man and try to get him to, to lay with, 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 with her. So she tried to flip it on the brother and try, try to, you know, she blaming him like he was being wicked. And then like her husband, like he, that was a bad decision he made. See, look, he brought in this Hebrew in here and he, look, he come in here to mock us and he tried to lay with me and I, I crowd a lie with a loud voice. So what is this called? False accusation. 
And Jesus Christ taught us that blessed are ye when men shall say all manner of evil against you. But the Lord said falsely for my name's sake. That's what the Lord taught in the Gospels. In the Gospel. So now it says, And it came to pass when he, had heard, when he heard that I had lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. So she tried to make it look like Joseph got scared when she started screaming, so he left. So this is, this is false accusations against our brother Joseph. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord, Joseph Lord, came home. And she spake unto him, meaning her husband, according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, right, as I lifted up my voice, like, like crying, like she's going like get, like to be raped and cried, right? And cried, oh, bear with me. And cried, right? Oh, I'm in the wrong. Uh, cried, right? Now, just bear with me one second. So it says, that he, see, that he, meaning Joseph, left his garment with me and fled out. So is that the truth? Well, the, yeah, he did flee from her. But not for the reasons that she's saying. So it says, and it came to pass when, right? And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, saying, after this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath, see, this man's wrath, his master, Potiphar, that was his name, was kindled, meaning kindled like a fire. Because tell us jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. That means that's going into a man, you know, another man slept with his wife. But in this situation, Joseph did not try to lay with her, but he's believing her side of the story. So then it's saying verse 20, and Joseph, his master, took him and put him into the what? Prison. Just like we read uh, the last Sabbath where, uh, who was it? Paul, right? Paul and Silas were put in prison, in the inner prison for preaching Christ. Remember how they uh, um, they called that evil spirit out of that woman that was um, into the, she was a, a, what would say? She was a soothsayer. She was, she was into putting spells. She was into all kinds. She was into sorcery and witchcraft, and she brought much money and gain to her masters. See, when Paul and Silas was preaching, people, you know, were repenting, and um, then this woman, um, they tell us in Acts 17 that, the, you know, people were repenting, and they, Paul and Silas, were put in prison. So they were actually put in prison, you know, and, and they were falsely accused too, teaching customs contrary to the Romans. They were put in prison, falsely accused, beaten. But the Lord was with Paul and Silas. The Lord had the earthquake go down. The men were freed from that prison. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and he knoweth how to, deli to deliver the godly out of what? Temptation. Even when we have to suffer, the Most High is still going to deliver us. He's going to give us the strength to endure. So, 
Let's read on in this verse here. So it says, And Joseph, his master, took him and put him into the prison, and a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. Now check out verse 21. But the Lord, the Most High, was with Joseph. The Most High was with Joseph, even though he ended up in prison. Because all the godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. See? And so when you read the Most High blessed him. To be like a... He, then he was like a keeper of the prison. That's why I say and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand. All the prisoners that were in the prison. <laughs> I mean, this man's a, most I gave him the ability to be, he was like a naturally born leader. See? And whatsoever, because the scriptures tell us that he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of the Lord. This brother feared the Lord. That's why he was a leader in Israel. And like Mattathias said, he got a name, a perpetual name. It's not about the pronunciation of his name. Name Joseph, or how we would say it in Hebrew. Talking about his reputation. His works. So I say, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. <laughs> See? So, and the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. It's just like when he was in Potiphar's house. But the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to what? To prosper. That's what the Lord told Joshua. He said, look, don't turn to the right or to the left of what I commanded. Don't add, don't take away. Don't lean upon your own understanding. Acknowledge my words, abide in them, have the faith in them, trust in the process of applying them. And whether the results are immediate or in time, you will reap what you sow in righteousness. So the Lord made... The works of Joseph to prosper and have good success. To eventually be a what in, e in Egypt? A ruler, Israel. That's, that's, that's what we read in 1 Maccabees. So we're going to end it here. 1 Maccabees 2, 53. Joseph, just like we read in Genesis 39, in the time of his what? Distress. See, that was a very difficult circumstance that that brother was in. To be tempted of that evil woman, the adulterous woman, making her uh, advances towards this brother to, to seduce him, to, 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 to lay with her. But he, in the time of his distress, he what? Kept and guarded with his life and applied and communicated the commandment. He kept the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. And eventually... And was made Lord of Egypt. See, we, be, we were reading the beginning stage of the Lord being with him and prospering. He was prospering in that prison. And then eventually, the Most High delivered him out of that prison when he interpreted a dream and a vision. And then he got promoted of Pharaoh to be second in command. So that later on, when Joseph sent his sons, not Joseph, Jacob sent his sons. During the famine, eventually, you know, Jacob's seed was going to be delivered because there was going to be a, a famine that was going to hit that whole part of the world for seven years, man. So that had to be prepared for. And the Lord showed that to uh, Joseph in a vision. He was um, in, a, in a dream. So that's all in the rest of the book of Genesis 39. So... With that, all praises to the Most High in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth for these scriptures. We'll read a song and then call it an evening. So, um, So we'll read um, Psalm 
119, verse 33. Psalm 119, verse 33. So it says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear for thy judgments. See, thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, thy commandments. Quicken me in thy righteousness. All praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That sitteth on the right hand of the Father in the heaven of the heavens. The most high throne, because the Father's throne is where? In heaven. And that's where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of the Father in the heaven of heavens. He's our mediator and high priest. He's our savior. And had his, and at his second appearing, all his enemies are going to be made his footstool. And the final enemy that's going to be destroyed is death because the dead in Christ shall be risen to be made immortal. All praises to the Most High Christ. All right, Israel, peace and blessings to your home. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Most High Christ bless you all. Have a blessed evening and rest of the week. All right.